Hello, and welcome to the Such a Nightmare podcast, Conversations About Horror. I am Catherine Troyer, and I'm so excited to be joined in human form. What? Yes. <laughs> for the first time since the pandemic. That's right. Tony Tresca. Hello there. This is a podcast where the horrifically nerdy meets the terrifyingly academic, as we explore that fine line between the horrific and the horrible. Each episode looks at a specific horror text that is, for better or worse, giving us nightmares. And we are so excited and thankful for you to be joining us for our spooktacular Halloween episode over 2022's Halloween Ends. Excellent. So... Those of you that are longtime listeners know that we slowly work our way through the Halloween franchise because mm-hmm. we can really only do one a year. It's it's as much as I can stomach without having to go to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, in like 15 years or so, we'll have completed the Halloween <laughs> franchise and can kind of cross that off the list. But I want to go back to the exciting part of today, which is that, again, we are in human form. Yes. Yes. <laughs> which means we are 100% not editing this episode this for is better unprompted or worse. unfiltered unasked for <laughs> yeah. coming to you straight <laughs> so there will be awkward silences <laughs> there will be moments where we say something incorrectly and normally our magician of an editor jackson would go back and make it sound like we're smart mm-hmm. not this time no you're getting us in all our unedited glory <laughs> which may or may not be a perfect way to discuss halloween ends That's a pretty good segue right there. Yeah, thank you so much. (laughs) So we're going to start with the summary that entices you to know just a little bit more. So, Tony, what do you have for us? So we are going back into the world of Halloween Ends. And uh, this sequel, it, uh, it asks if you remember the last one, and then it says it doesn't matter if you remember the last one, because we are jumping four years ahead. Yes. Uh, and it mostly just matters if you've watched the first Halloween movie yes. uh, in this trilogy, because they are jumping four years ahead after the events of 2018's Halloween, um, and we find a liberated Lori. Lori has decided she is no longer afflicted by Michael Myers and the pl- demons of her past. But her granddaughter uh, is met someone <laughs> evil. Like, uh, yeah. just a... He, basically, he's the Joker. He's Corey. He's this kid who he's involved in a town murder, and the town goes crazy, and this guy does not handle it well. Yeah. He and tried. He for tried while. for a little while, but these two, they go on a romance. It gets intense. Michael Myers shows up, starts teasing this guy, and, you know, it. Halloween will end. Yes. Until, you know. Until, yeah. Another couple of years where someone reinvents the cycle. Exactly. <laughs> so it's interesting the way you described um, Lori, because you use the word liberated, and you're correct mm. in that she has that scene where she's like, you know, I'm not going to live in a creepy, like, dungeon. She, yeah, she's yeah. not living in a yeah. shack anymore. She's come outside. She's bought a real house. But that word liberated is really important because everything she's done is domesticated. Mm. Right? Like, everything she has done is actually the opposite of the, like, badass woman that she was definitely in the 2018 film and a little bit. And, I mean, she was really wounded in the hospital in the second one, right? But, like, we see her baking. We see her knitting. And, of course, some of that's a throwback, right? But, like, some of it's also just, like, why is she suddenly feeling the need to be domesticated? So, I guess, why does freedom equal being a conventional woman because this is an affirmative <laughs> horror text <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much right? and i mean you know it's it's even important that like the final scenes are in the kitchen because mm-hmm. where else tony would a good woman be than in the kitchen so there, there's a lot about this film that is is problematic and i think you're absolutely correct that 99.9 percent of it comes down to the fact it's affirmative yeah it, uh, yeah, and for those who have been listening to us, our discussion of the Halloween franchise, you know that we've used this framework to examine the Halloween films before. So, affirmative horror is 
anything that is horror that ultimately is going to affirm the status quo mm -hmm. is like a, a good summary to think about it. It's like, yes, things are bad. Things go bump in the night, but humans will come together. And yes. because of our power, our shared power, we're going to be better than that. And we'll banish that because we're better and we're above that. Exactly. And the monster is that which is not us. Right. Right. We're, and so literally calling it Michael Myers, you know, in IMDb, it's just listed as the shape. So mm -hmm. literally having it be this thing that is not the town of Haddonfield, right? Whereas disaffirmative her horror is going to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. And so you, it's saying that when you pull back the sheet on our town, our society, the real monsters are us. And, you know, this, this frame, like, uh, you think you could sense some of the tension or in the summary. This one is more interesting than most other Halloween movies, at least in because... It introduces Corey, yes. who is this character who comes from the town, yes. who crosses over and is eventually pushed outside. Yes. So it does show you the ways in which these affirmative and disaffirmative labels are kind of mm, fluffy, and you can they can kind of overlap a yeah. little bit. And and this is a continuation of the second film, which was called um, Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills. Thank you. Which made a concerted effort, and I think we talked about this in our episode, like, the scariest parts of the film are the mob mentality in the hospital, That's right? That's right. And not not the mob, like, vigilante, because we've grown accustomed to that, but the actual, like, mob at the, at the hospital and people being injured and killed. Mm -hmm. That was the scariest part of the film, but it was like, that was the scariest part of the film, but not the scariest part that the filmmakers wanted us to have. And so this film did something similar, right? Because Corey, the question that this film is presents but doesn't follow through to a place that I think makes sense is this question of nature versus nurture, right? Mm -hmm. Is Corey inherently broken? Because he, he always was a little awkward and like, yeah. you know, he obviously should not have been a babysitter. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was an accident. Like, I, or they set it up to, so you truly believe it was an accident. And, but it's, And I think it was. Yeah. I mean, I, I walked away. I think that you know, there's not a lot of other ways. In the, in the opening sequence, yes. this, um, a little bit of light spoilers for us. Yes. Uh, for those out there, but in the opening sequence, we watch um, Corey's babysitting um, in the neighborhood, and there is an accident that happens, and he is, it in some ways, like, uh, he is responsible, because he is yep. the babysitter, he is the person who is responsible for looking after this child and ensuring that they don't die. Yeah. Kid does die. Right. Um, it's maybe, it's not entirely, it doesn't seem like it's entirely his fault. Like, Michael no. Myers is also out murdering on the town this night. It yeah. just as easily could have been him. It just as easily could have been an accident. We don't know. That part is unanswered. Well, I think, I think we know that it's, because we hear the door push open, right? And then we see the kid fall. So we know it's not Michael Myers wielding the knife, but we also are supposed to believe that Michael Myers essence and presence has made it so that like under normal circumstances Corey wouldn't have panicked under normal circumstances that kid wouldn't have been quite so obnoxious because he was having nightmares and and so it sets up this idea that like the town is is, prob is problematic mm -hmm. and then it continues it by giving us like the four most obnoxious band geeks in the world right who are constantly torturing him and it's like interesting that the band geeks are the ones who are like the bullies which I think is just this film's attempt to like be clever in a way that wasn't actually that clever, but but they're like even the out groups can yeah. have bullies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they, so we see Corey just sort of be deconstructed right again and again, and then what's left is just this this pit of darkness. Mm -hmm. So the film is trying, right? I think it's really really trying, but then at the end of the day, it just reverts back to that really affirmative, but like moment where we have this you know, the town coming together, despite the fact the town has been really crappy. Like, they are horrible people. The town is the real monster. They are mean to Lori. They are. They are mean to Corey. They're mean to her daughter. Her They're mean to her, her granddaughter. Daughter, yeah. Yeah, like, the town is horrible. And yeah, I understand that, like, you know, some so and so is in a wheelchair forever, but it's clearly not Lori's fault. But in the moment, at the end, right, all sins are forgotten because it was never the town. It was this evil, and the evil's been purged for now. Right. Mm-hmm. I thought it was also interesting that in that moment they chose to have um, black disabled characters confront yeah. Lori and yeah. then have Lori kind of be like, hmm, ugh, these people are really kind of getting up in arms about all this stuff. And you're, I was like, it just kind of seemed like another one of those like classic Halloween affirmative, like from the set, like holdovers from the 70s where you're like, I always 
always just like people complaining and you're like I, yeah. don't, I don't i don't know if that's true i don't know it seems like that was a pretty legitimate complaint not directed yeah. right to be yeah. directed at Lori, but yeah. like a pretty legit concern <laughs> yeah and and you're right that like this again is like in uh, some of the other films we do have more representation of poc characters and of like queer characters and then but they all have to die right that's except right. for the one little boy that we see at the end um when he's you know walking with the mob and honestly to me that felt like a callback whether intended or not to Candyman, right and to at the very end when there, there's the little boy mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. all walking to the funeral yeah right yeah but in that case in Candyman, the town is walking to the funeral because they at least in the original Candyman, right they're celebrating the hero that is helen in right. Rita Costa's version you know helen is re-portrayed sort of as this white woman who lurks but at least in the you know 92 version and so there was some weird like moments where that was the only time we got to see non-white non-healthy bodies that's right and they were and they were just used as like voices of concern yeah for Lori to kind of like write off dismiss or like gain confidence from or like gain yeah. like be like oh yeah no i know that that's some bad stuff happened but i'm gonna have to rise up and do this well and when they intrude on her at the grocery store which admittedly like leave her alone she's at the grocery store sure. but she's like in a moment of happiness right so right. they don't serve as the greek chorus that they should or could they just serve as like you said the sort of like you know broken parts that wouldn't it be nice if they would just stop admitting or acknowledging they're broken so again we're getting really really affirmative in the the image we're presenting mm -hmm. but i think for most people that's probably not the problem with this film i yeah i am because most that's, people like the original Halloween. That's and, true. And quite a few people liked the 2018 film. I, I really like the 2018 film. And quite a few people liked the last yes. one, too. And if you haven't, like, paid attention to the internet in the yeah. last while, you, you will not know this, but if you have, like, it's really hard to ignore. People have very mixed feelings about this film. I, yeah, I was kind of, I mean, I guess I'm not, I guess I don't really have any sense claim over yeah. being, knowing, like, where fans of this franchise like what will they like because i don't know i know i just, just we've just spent like 12 minutes talking about how it was like just so so but this was my favorite of the new ones that i've seen so it was kind of shocking to me to hear the the reaction from the fan the halloween yeah, fans yeah. online of being like this one is terrible <laughs> yeah so so there's like a few people that are like this is pretty good there's a lot of people that are saying this is terrible and then there's a few people like um dead meat for those of you that watch his channel where he was like i have lots of feelings about this film i'm excited to hear what others think and he's he's pretty keen on admitting when he loves a film which makes me think that it's it's probably more of a mixed bag for him yeah and one of the best i don't remember who said this but one of the best things i saw online was somebody who said it's interesting that you all are acting as though the entire Halloween franchise is perfect. They're like, there's a lot of missed notes. And then, you know, in everyone's mind, I think comes in like Season of the Witch. Um, also the third one. Yeah. And and then like a couple others. And, and so he was like, and so this person was like, it's not like this. It's not like the franchise is perfect. And it's not like this is really the end. Right. It's not like it's yeah. not going to come back at some point. So I went into the film knowing that it was your favorite of the bunch. Which probably was not a good sign of endorsement. Yeah, well, and you even said, like, it's my favorite of the bunch, but remember my feelings about the franchise. Um, <laughs> I, I had... I liked it well enough. Mm -hmm. But I did have some, some fundamental problems. And, and I definitely, like, I didn't hate it, but my partner sighed the entire time. She was like, and I was like, you can leave if you need to. I'm going to finish watching this so I can podcast about it. But, and this is true. This is a legit claim. The way that Michael Myers acts is not true to Michael Myers. Oh, it is not in this film. Yes. You're talking, oh, I could not, could not agree more. The Michael Myers, my biggest concern, and as someone who is not a Halloween fan, yeah. fan or franchise, is this film utterly wastes michael myers oh. and like just sticks him in the corner in like the literal sewers yes the entire like pennywise like yeah i'm like this is not michael yes. myers no and and the truth is is that it's so they waste him and then his behaviors just just don't match 
right? He's sort of an undiscerning killer. Mm -hmm. You know, we have other killers who are very like targeting, targeting specific people like Freddy Krueger's attacking the children of the parents, right? Um, Pamela Voorhees needs to go after the counselors. If other people get in the way, sure, but like the counselors primarily. But like for the most part, even though he's been in various degrees obsessed with Lori, like anyone's fair game. Right. So his keeping Corey alive, and we, I realize that there's a scene that like makes sure to hit you over the head where he literally sees himself reflected like, in Corey's mm -hmm. eyes, right? Like I understand what it's trying to do, but it doesn't make sense. Um, he's not killing enough people. He wouldn't like assist kill. Yeah, and I, I think, and, like, I'll, I'll, let's give, like, the filmmakers, like, a like a fair shake here in terms of, I see kind of what they're thinking of doing, like, the, what they're attempting to do yes. here. They're like, Michael Myers is an aged, I mean, he is, he's an aged character. Yes. They talk about how this guy has, is, like, is mentally disabled, and they talk, and the town is, yes. well, is well known, and so this guy is, like, past his prime needing some help and so i could definitely see like sure. maybe why like maybe where that relationship yes could come in i just don't think it's very satisfying or consistent with the rest of like what has been established Correct. with the halloween franchise particularly even like like let's not even go to the other movies within yeah. like let's just like these this trilogy yeah michael myers has been established as a force of nature godlike status yes. above it all and then in this now he is just back to being a regular human like we see him in the first one that's okay but that is utterly fundamentally different than yes what the michael myers that was established in the two movies in this very tr trilogy and i think that's the key right is that in this very trilogy they do they elevate him to a status of, of inhumanness that's not even present in the 78 right and you can't Yes, I realize he's been burned and beaten and whatever, but like you can't, you can't make that twist. And now people are going to go back and they're going to be like, "But you guys talked about how you didn't like when they elevated him in it's the true. first two, but now you don't want this here." I think it's the lack of consistency. It's the lack of consistency and the lack of thought. Like, yes. cons like just like these people are being paid millions of dollars to sit and think about this, and they can't yes. think these questions yes. through. <laughs> and I think that's it, right? Like, is it's because again, I'm really excited by the. The idea, like, like having, I liked, I actually liked the kill where Corey sort of like trapped or spidered and brought in a kill so that like he could, Michael Myers could gain his strength. Right? Yeah. Um, I want to say that like the boyfriend of the grandson, that, that former boyfriend, the cop, he looked like he was like 20 years older than her. I don't, oh, there was some did. weird. It was kind of creepy. Yeah. And I couldn't, and like no one I, acknowledged it. I don't know. It was I don't know. Weird. That small towns for you. Well, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you would know better than I. So there, but like, I even didn't mind the, like the idea that like, he has to like almost regain his strength via blood. Um, but, but he's only killing, you know, he's not, first off, he's again, he's not indiscriminately killing, mm -hmm. but also I expect at this point for him to not just be killing the woman who's sleeping with her boss. Right. And I realize that like Corey picked them out, but like, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it's time to, to move past that. And I know, like you said, to give the writers and the filmmakers the, the best of this, it, it is clever, this question, because from the 78 film onward, right? It's like, mm -hmm. why did he do this? Cause he's Michael Myers. Yeah. There's just something wrong with him. He was just born a bad egg. And so I like ending the cycle by asking like, is that actually true? Can you truly be born a bad egg? Or are you created? Or like, are you created? It is, yes. this, it is a question of like nature versus nurture. Yes. Um, which is, which is interesting. It, it is, it is. And I, I do think that is what ultimately was most fascinating about this film to me. And what I kind of, I did kind of, I ultimately did kind of like the weird dynamic, even if it was utterly inconsistent. I kind of like the weird dynamic between Corey and Michael Myers and they're like bro, like almost bro -y yeah. likeness of like killing all these people. I think if they'd done more of that, I would have had less problem. Yeah. I, but I think you're right. Like, so first off, it takes a really long time for us to get to some kills. Yes, it like, does. Way too long. Yes. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Like <laughs> way, way, way too long. And, and the film and the space that they're putting the film and the focus that they're using is not right either. Because to be perfectly honest, although the uh, the actress who played the granddaughter was fine, she was lovely actually, 
who cares? Yeah. We are not watching this for granddaughter. We're watching this either for Jamie Lee Curtis, and I do mean Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah, right? We're not watching, not Lori. <laughs> yeah. Or we're watching it for Lori, or we're watching it for Michael Myers. But this film was like, well, what if we took the reasons you came and just didn't give you very much of it? Uh, yeah. And I, and I, I, the cynic, the cynic in me yeah. is like, oh, it's, this is because this is what, this is the setup for the next for the for the mm. next trilogy they're establishing this like they're building this same kind of like dynamic between the killer Interesting. and this final girl it's in the same family they're making it very like ancestral they're literally trying to like pass that yeah. torch along to the next gen However, I don't think they're going to get there because they don't do it very well. No. And people, <laughs> the fans who they're trying to yeah. pass this off to the next generation, hate this. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't know. It's interesting. It kind of seems like a situation in which they put this element, this romance, they put so much stock yes. Yes. on the romance between Corey and Lori's granddaughter. That takes up that takes up a majority of the runtime. Who I feel like we should name. Right. Yeah, Allison. Allison. There we go. Allison. So Corey and Allison, yeah. their romance takes up a, a lot. And it takes up a lot in terms of screen time. Mm -hmm. But part of my problem with it is how little story time has passed. Mm. Right? Like, I'm not here for someone that's clearly in their mid to late 20s, right? Because if she's a nurse... And it's never clear if she's an RN or if she's like an LPN or something else. But she's clearly has gone to some school because she, she's right. like received training. So she has to be, and she's drinking at a bar. So at minimum, she's 21. She might even be 22 to 24. Um, now, I understand that Corey is stunted emotionally. So I'm not talking about him. And I know Allison has been through trauma, but also she had like 17 years of normalcy, right? And just a couple of years of oddness. Like... It just, it's, it's, it's not only not realistic, but it was laughable how quickly they became romantically a, entwined. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the drama that went with it, right? Like their very first date when he stumbles off at the bar and he's like, how dare you do this to me? And she's like, hold my hand. I want to be with you. And I'm like, what is that? This is the first date, Tony. The first date. I know. Date. I know. It was so awkward. And I know they're trying to, like, again, show that, like, they're seeing something in each other that's broken. They see each other's darkness, blah, blah, blah. But couldn't we have had that start, like, in July? Couldn't couldn't the narrative have started mm. that in July and we see it and not just five days or however? I mean, it was. I don't even think it was more than a couple of weeks. I think, you're, I think you're right. That's an interesting point. I don't think I had placed it, the problem, in being, like, the the timeline of it but i think that's actually interesting perhaps if the story had just like literally given a bit a bit more time to breathe like yeah almost like oh this is silly in a different movie mm -hmm. but like Corey and michael myers are like doing like a training a yes. year-long halloween training that's montage hysterical. from one halloween to the that's next hysterical. while Corey is also wooing the daughter yes. of yes. Lori to get and Lor winning Lori's trust yes. so that then that on that next halloween Halloween can finally end, and then the two of them can end this yes. the Lori's bloodline or whatever. Yes. And that's a very different. Actually, that's very different. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, producers, if you guys want to make that movie, yeah, hit me up. That's. I mean, it is right. Like, there's just, and I think that that by shortening everything, right? Because we also get the impression that although Corey has been out in the world for a while. The, the particular bullies that have, like, it's only been a week or two, right? Because, right. again, it's been the entire duration, which sort of undermines this idea that it is nurture, right? We're not really seeing, we're not seeing the environment. We're really, and so we're left to just be like, well, maybe nurture played a little role, but he was clearly a broken egg. And it's like, was he, though? I don't, that's and, not and interesting. Again, I guess they kind of, like, there are some other, like, sequences that kind of, like, at his, his family life yes. is, sound, is shown, like, in one scene yes. to not, to, like, his mom is a little bit controlling and, and like tries to kiss him. It's Ugh. like very much like that same like, oh uh, Eddie and his mom from um, uh, it. Yes, the, the yes. It films. It's yes. very. It's a similar dynamic to that. Um, but it wasn't so much of the film's time. Again, to go back to like where they proportion time, mm -hmm. like they had to do all of these really cheap things, like having it be so over the top with the mom, right? That it's right. like, okay, you can't tell me that he's been 
he hasn't snapped before this, right? Like, because if that's, we don't see an escalation, right? We just get this sense that she's always like that. Um, and, and there's several of those moments because they spend way, way, way too much screen time showing us this melodramatic relationship mm -hmm. between Allison and Corey that, that nobody has paid to see because this is a horror movie and it's not even that interesting. No, it, it, it's it's not that interesting, and I think that I kind I liked a lot of the stuff. I liked kind of this the journey better that they sent Lori mm -hmm. on than they, which is at least good. I I did. I think Jamie Lee Curtis does a very good job. Yes. in this movie, as With she the, like, always does. Twenty minutes she was given, but yes. With the twenty minutes she's given, and I I I hear I I think that that is good. That is interesting. Yes. And then they ultimately do kind of the final sequence of the movie with her and Michael Myers, where they're just like back to form, yes. back to basics. Yes. Pretty solid. But even Corey killing himself to just let us see, because like, mm, you know, like even good, that yeah. was good. Although, you know, I would have appreciated Lori. I know she was traumatized, but also like this is old hat for her and she doesn't care that much about Corey. She, she, I feel like she would have been able to articulate, hey, by the way, I didn't do this. Um, yeah. So there was a lot of like, there was these weird missed moments because there were so many good ones. One of the moments that was brilliant and tiny was when the stepdad gives him the motorcycle mm -hmm. and he's just like, thank you. Yes. And like, so then we have this question of like, how much love does someone need? How much love can you give when, when someone's broken? Like, those were, there were these beats. There, yeah, I, I think that the, the movie, it's frustrating because I do actually think that this had some of the most interesting ideas of this, definitely this trilogy. Mm -hmm. And as a Halloween, I haven't seen all of the Halloween movies, so I can't really speak to the full scope of the franchise, but of the ones that I've seen, this seems to be exploring a little bit more interesting, elevated themes mm -hmm. than the other Halloween movies. Unfortunately, it doesn't really execute those ideas very well or really commit to them. But I, it was at least a little bit more interesting. There were some, there were those moments, and I, another one of the moments that w I really liked uh, from this uh, was Lori, how Lori ultimately kind of tricked Michael Myers mm -hmm. with her fake suicide. Because I, th as me, well, but she's tricking Corey. Uh, Corey, as yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. yes, but this this whole sequence in yes. and around there. I was, it kind it did shock me because for a second I was like, I cannot believe how wrong the filmmakers have gotten mm -hmm. Laurie's character. By, they, Laurie would never commit suicide. Yeah. This is an utter, like, 180 on everything, yeah. ev literally everything yeah. that we have been given. But, and then, of course, she didn't. She, it was all, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, it's go interesting for it. that you say that because you're, she has that line where she says to Corey, like, you didn't think I'd kill myself, did you? And I have the exact same thought as you. So I did not have the thought of, like, come on, Lori. Like, you can hang on. I have the same thought of, like, oh, my gosh. They clearly don't understand this character. Yeah. And this has become the most unacceptably melodramatic film. So yeah. it's interesting because, you know, she says, she laughs at Corey, right? Like, you didn't think I was strong enough. But like, I don't know if the if the writers meant for us to also think that she was going to kill herself because yeah. we didn't trust them. I actually think that's true. Yeah. I because I definitely did think that they were. Yeah. I I thought that I was like, they, David everyone... <laughs> David Gordon Green, Danny McBride, you guys just utterly messed yeah. it up this time <laughs> because because so we much didn't of it's been them. so yeah, melodramatic that's right. and they've been so over the top. To show you how melodramatic I felt it was, there was a moment in the film that I laughed because I actually thought I was seeing something that didn't end up being that way, but I didn't actually anticipate them not doing it. So there's a scene that's 100% wasted where we see Corey on the motorcycle mm -hmm. and Allison's on his back and, you know, her hair is flowing and they're just riding down the street in the darkness. And it was like, definitely did not need that minute of footage. Mm -hmm. I kid you not though. So it starts out with like a long, somewhere between an establishing and a long shot. So you can't really see them. I truly thought it was Michael Myers on the back <laughs> holding on to Corey's um, waist. Oh my God. And I thought that it was the hair of his wig. Like, yeah. and I truly legitimately, so I laughed because I was like, this is about what I'm expecting. And then of course it ends up being Allison, but that's how melodramatic and ridiculous this film was. God, that would have been better though. It would have. <laughs>
I kind of, because at least she would have laughed, right? Well, that and, also is just such a fun, I, that's so funny. Yeah. That's such a funny image. I, I laughed. Visual. I like snorted. I was like, ah. And then I realized that wasn't, and it just became more melodrama. But that's what this film did to me, right? Is that I didn't expect them to rise out of the melodrama because it's like they, they forgot their genre. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that you, you liked this the best of the three. I will mm -hmm. maintain that I liked the first one the best. And I liked the first one the best because in 2018, one of the things, and, and continuing on to like 20, even now, 2022, but we've, we've begun to ask ourselves what happens to the final girl when she ceases to be mm -hmm. a girl. Does she become a broken woman or does she become a strong woman or does she become the monster? And and I, I liked the fact that that's what I thought the film was going to really be wrestling with. And it really made it keen to us, this idea of, of the mirroring of of, of killer and, and final girl mm -hmm. and having it be that like her house was this giant trap and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, it got, it got impossible. So very quickly when he's like lifting up the firemen, you know, right. But to me, that was, that was the most interesting. Cause that's why we wanted them to return. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably, I mean, maybe from like an actual filmmaking standpoint, yeah. the first one probably is the best of the trilogy, but it was just so, I think that that the, I still prefer, if I'm going to, if I'm going to pick a Halloween yeah. now to go back and watch, I probably will. And I say this every time I see a new Halloween movie, I'll probably go back and watch the first one because every time, like they never, there's never a more interesting yeah. articulation of the same themes yeah. than in the first one. Yeah. Like everything, like everything we've just been talking about yeah. of like all the things we kind of liked about yeah. this one, it's all done better in the original. Yeah, it really is. And I will say, and I know that this is like definitely a, um, not an opinion shared by everyone. I also really like, and I don't know how long it's going to take us to get to it, but Halloween H2O, the 20 years later, um, because it returns back to the fun of the slashers because they're back in a school setting. Yeah. Um, and she's, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis is in it, which is nice, but it's also, you know, it's just not taking itself seriously because it's like a nineties, early, it's an early two thousands film when they didn't take the genre seriously in fun ways. Yeah. Um, but also terrible ways. So, <laughs> so like that for me remains up there, but I just, this isn't where I would be curious to know their thoughts about why they needed it to end here. I'd also be curious to know, like, I just felt like there were some things that just did not make sense. Mm -hmm. Like if Lori's truly becoming this liberated woman, like, why don't they just move somewhere else? You know, like, yeah, like that, and I guess they kind of explore that. They're like, "We've lived here." For, I think it's, it's we've lived here forever. It's like yeah, Allison that's... has that line where she's like, "We can't possibly leave our community," and I'm like, "I don't know. This community's been yeah. pretty bad to you." Yeah. I'd also like to say that as someone that someday wants to own a house in 2022, where I may never be able to afford to buy a house, it I'm really getting frustrated with this. Like, look at this giant house that I built when for the last 20 years I've just lived in the woods as a hermit. Mm -hmm. like without a job and I still don't have a job. Like, Oh, that is a, that's a fascinating you know, point. That is just, <laughs> it's just one of those little things that it's like, how did you know, she afford? How did she yeah. af afford a house? And it's like true. a nice house. Yeah. So there's, <laughs> and, and I don't expect, like, I understand we go to the movies for fantasy. And so you don't want everyone to be living in the apartment that everyone can only really afford. But like, I just, I think the filmmakers are better than this. Yeah. All right. You know, like maybe not legions above, because I don't know. I'm really only judging them on the cycle, but they're clearly, they, they have moments where they are smart enough to make me know that some of the rest of this could have been better. If nothing else, they could have just had more Jamie Lee Curtis. The, they are better than this. Yeah. I have like this writing and directing pair has worked on television before. They do uh, the Righteous Gemstones. They created Vice Principals together. They are an incredible uh, a creative team when they have the right property. Yeah. Like I, I so I don't actually think it's a, like a lack of effort. I don't think no. it's like a, I don't, I just think that this is a miss for yeah. the creative team in terms of like alignment of style because dark and, and all, which is weird because I think that dark, they do dark comedy better than almost anyone 
I have anyone who I see, anyone working today, their television shows are incredible at this, but it's when they take themselves too seriously that they kind of get off base. I'm so glad you said that because that is actually something that, that I was talking about after the film ended, um, that, that my partner brought up that there's literally no, no comedy. Mm, mm -hmm. And even the other ones have, that's, have yeah. the beats, right? Like, like that little boy who, who yes. shows up at the end where he's <laughs> like, Ew, that's nasty. You know? And he's like talking like that's, it was hysterical. He was funny. The second one also had a, a fewer, but they tried to have a couple a of couple beats. Of, yeah. But this one was like, there was not a single moment of levity. And, and I, I increasingly maintain that the best horror out there is probably going to be relying, if not on, on humor, then on comedy, right? And the beats of comedy. And, and there, there, you should be setting lines up, punch lines up, and then making them. And instead, this film was like, what if we did some things that aren't going to make sense, but we're going to ask you to arrive at the same conclusions, right? And that's, you lose that. Like, that's what comedy can't do. Yeah, it was... It was set. It was sloppy setup and payoff. Yeah. It was, and again, they're smarter than this. They're smarter than this, and I think, you know, you are not required to think about your audience as creators. Like you're really not. Actually, like you literally don't have to if you don't want to. However, this has happened now with a couple of, of films this season that I just can't help but feel like they're forgetting what their audience is there for. Their audience is there for Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you, I, I don't actually know if I agree with what you've said. Okay. I feel like that they can't, they don't have to think about their audience. I mean, I'm trying to be like, I actually think they should have to. I, like, I think <laughs> that if you're a smart artist and a smart creator, you're, you're not just making things you're not for yourself in a bubble. Yes, yeah. Yes. But technically they're not required to, if, if they want to make money, period, sure. has, let alone have a, a text that people enjoy, they probably should think of their audience, which I think the fact that this film is not recouping its financial losses in any meaningful way, which is true of like every film this season, but you it, know. It's a, a true of quite a bit of them. It's really the, there's only been a couple, like Top Gun is was a huge because th Top Gun thought of its audience. That's right. I, right? I think that the Top Gun and this is a, it's another it's another it's very similar yes. in terms of like, but that one thought about their audience and this one was yeah. And I don't know if it was a lack of like th not thinking about their audience or just their like oh are, are there I think maybe they just got so caught up in like trying to uh, set up this continuation for the next I for don't the, know. For the few, I don't know. They really made it clear, right, that this is the end of their cycle. So that I don't th think they felt the need to set it up. But I want to go back to the Top Gun example, right? Because yeah, go for somebody it. Who, who, not somebody, um, Tom Cruise and others, mm -hmm. when they were like, okay, why do people still love the original? They're like, we have not, pra we have practical, practical effects. Right. We have Tom Cruise. That's we right. We have Val Kilmer. Right. And we have pretty men playing some sort of sport in the sand. And yes. like a family drama. And they were like, okay. And I mean, Tom Cruise even said like, if Val Kilmer can't be in it, can't you know, and like they, they went through and checked it. And, and this film, it was like, why do people love Halloween? They were like a final girl in Laurie. And they're like, oh, we'll have Laurie for a few minutes. We'll have her, fi we'll have her finally at the yeah, end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis, who could probably murder someone in the streets and people would just be like, Jamie Lee Curtis. You know? <laughs> um, and they're like, yeah, we'll put her in in a few minutes. And then Michael Myers, right? Like, yeah. and, and, a, and a story that is honestly not complicated, right? These are the things people want. And I would like to say that this was, this has been a true for a missed mark also for Hocus Pocus 2. Oh, oh which, no. I'm uh, so sorry to hear you hated it. The best, the best <laughs> description I read is that it's cutesy, not campy. And it's like, I think they forgot that their primary audience is 30-year-old women, right? Mm. Like, they're end men, but, like, mm -hmm. it's not... I heard this, too, yeah. is that they, like, kind of de-sexy oh, the, the yeah. Hocus Pocus. Yeah, they made it for 12-year-old girls who want to have a coven of friends. Okay. I mean, Which would that's be good for fine. the... Maybe great for the 12-year-old yeah. girls out there, but... But, like... So someday you and I will will make our way through, and I will tell you how wonderful Hocus Pocus is, even though you will never understand. And then I will make you watch Hocus Pocus too, so that we can. And then I list. will. I'll probably understand that yeah. one. Yes. So it's it's something that's happening, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're gonna have a film that's a continuation of a story, you have to think about that. 
and and I guess that there's like a, it's hard because you creators are like you got we want to be a we gotta sure. tell our own stories we gotta we can't just like l di listen to everything that the everything that the fans say and I think that that's, that's true, true to some extent. But that also does mean that perhaps that audience who you're trying to appeal to is not going to show up in quite the same way. This is the lowest grossing of the of the trilogy. Mm. It probably will make its money back because oh. it only has a budget of thirty three million. So wow. you have, factor in another like fifteen to thirty million for advertising. So you got like sixty million. It's already made over eighty eight worldwide. Okay. So at, at the time that we're recording this, which is uh, end of end of October twenty twenty two, so. It's probably going to make just barely yeah. make its money back. So it's not a huge win in the same way that the other two right. were for this franchise. But that should tell you something. That should. So here's the truth, right? Um, as a Halloween film, it doesn't quite make sense if your understanding of a Halloween film is the relationship between Laurie and Michael Myers, mm -hmm. slash Michael Myers killing people. Right. Um, in the trilogy... It offers potential to be someone's favorite. Uh, yeah, and by someone I, I don't like. I don't know how many other people. I, I agree don't know with how you. many other people agree with me either. And uh, again, I think I I just kind of liked this. I liked this for the we. I liked Lori. I liked Jamie Lee Curtis mm -hmm. and Lori's oh, like yeah. Lori's adventure that she goes on, yes. starting like for. It is interesting to have her start as being like I'm healed, even though she's clearly not. Yes. Which is why I think I liked it because I thought it was a coping mechanism yeah. that was clear rather than true liberation. That makes sense. I just needed more of it then. Mm, right? Like that's I needed, fair. I that's needed fair. more moments where like we see her making something that's hideous accidentally while she's knitting. Right? Oh, like, that would have been better. <laughs> and that would have been a good moment for comedy, right? Instead we see that she burns a pie because she's distracted by writing her and book. Then, which... And then we hear Allison explicitly say, like yeah. just like through dialogue I don't think that she's actually as healed or whatever. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's a little bit more, it's a little bit better yeah. than that, but honestly, not much. Right. So, you know, I think there was a mismanagement of screen time mm -hmm. um, and, and as a result, the narrative of it, but it, it tried to put this film in 2022. It tried to ask us what it means to have a boogeyman and whether mm -hmm. a boogeyman is, is us or someone else. It just didn't make it there. I think that at the end of the day, I agree with everything you said. And the only thing I can say about this is I'm just thankful that it is they didn't commit to what the original Wikipedia plot was for what like was when it was it? first announced. It was like in during the midst of COVID nineteen and political tensions. Oh, so yeah. I'm really glad that they didn't just try to they didn't weren't like making political edgy Halloween yeah, that's um, good. during COVID because that's good. I don't know. I think that would have been way worse than this. Yeah. But it just wasn't it, yeah. it wasn't the best. And for those of you that you know are huge fans of the franchise, the good news is is that this won't be the end, right? Like No. And, <laughs> no, it'll come back in four or five years. Not with Jamie Lee Curtis because her story's done, which is not how I would have ended it, but, but you know, also like she'll move what, on to other projects. What did you think about you get massive spoilers here. They really do like they put Michael Myers at the end of this movie. Like they, they there's not a whole lot of subtlety. They put him in. The, is it a, a uh, the, yeah like the wood chipper? The wood grease, chi but it's like metal grinder. Me, yeah, wood chipper yeah. metal grinder. And they like watch. They show you like explicitly his body being destroyed. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah. again, obviously they can retcon all of that within in a future franchise, but. I don't know. I actually kind of thought that was a ballsy choice of them, yeah. and I liked it. I thought I was like, again in a movie where I didn't love everything. I do want to acknowledge there are a couple di ballsy, daring moments that this they do take in here yeah. that I kind of liked, and they paid off. They certainly have made it challenging for whoever's going to come next. That's right. Yeah, because whoever comes next is either going to have to have its a narrative that's happening in between. Right, the years of 1978 and 2022, and so it's just like the un, the lost stories of Michael Myers. Please don't do that, someone. Or they're gonna have to do, like you said, like a hey, just kidding. Um, the last three films didn't count, which actually is what That's those probably, three films did too. Right, yeah. they were like all the films in between. Don't count. They don't count. So, you know, I think that's just going to be the next iteration. But I think you're right, though. Like, at the very least, we can say, for better and worse, 
this this writing team made decisions. Yeah. And I think it's interesting. We're in an interesting place in like the fandom community. Yeah. And so I think for a really long time, a lot of like discussions that at least I saw that I wasn't super interested in were on fan communities where like a lot of stuff of like not adhering to the timeline or not okay. it's not it's not faithful yes. enough it's not it's not exactly it doesn't yes. it, it misses this a tiny little detail from mm -hmm. the first thing and thus i can't even i can't even possibly contend right. with right. the ideas of this but now we've kind of switched to a different point it's less about like accuracy and literally aligning everything perfectly within this like detailed and thought out timeline and now i think fans are just like we are looking more to like the core ideas, yes. like the theme, yes. the thematic elements of this franchise are what is important yes. to us about this. And, and how are we in an inherent faithfulness to the original source material, source of horror, idea of this, of this iconic villain. And I think if you're evaluating it, this film from that perspective, it's a pretty big failure. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I, so I think that they're looking at it both in terms of internal faithfulness, which again is, I think you're right, why people had so many feelings, right? Mm -hmm. If this had been a non-Halloween film, I know, yeah, I, I actually um, it probably would have been kind yeah. of interesting yeah. because it's like this weird, I this like weird story yeah. of the old guard passing yeah. it to the next generation, but then like and, the next gen not being good enough, so right. we have to go back to the goat, right? Like, right, you know, like there's definitely that. I think, and the other thing, the the one thing that might be in the the filmmakers sort of favor is, is that the other thing I think fandoms are really interested in now is like you said the internal faithfulness and whether or not the filmmakers are appreciative and fans themselves right like we've talked about that like in the remake for Nightmare on Elm Street they were like we really hated the film that's why we're redoing it and yeah. people were like but we love it and I don't think f even if this is not your version of Halloween they truly, you can tell that, like, this is a story they care passionate about, and they yeah, are fans. That's true. It's not my version. It's not what I would have done as a fan. Um, but, like, I think that's why there's enough people that are sticking up for them. Because at the end of the day, they were respectful to yes. to Lori, at least. Yes. Right? Um, and they had a version of, of Michael Myers. So. That was... I, uh, in the past two, I would say overly deferential yes. to the original yeah. and like elevates them to so much of a godlike status mm -hmm. that they set themselves up for some problems yeah. in this yeah. in this film. But no, I, I, I agree with everything you've just said. They clearly tried their best and they're passionate of, and care about this, which is not always something you get with horror filmmakers. So more of that. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to our thoughts, which were clearly lots. Um, and we'd love to hear your thoughts. Tony, what do people do? So they can go ahead and they can get in touch with us by clicking on the links in the description of this podcast. They can get in touch with us via our social medias or our email down there. Let us know what you'd like to see next, what you thought of Halloween ends. This is a divisive film so i imagine there'll probably be some of you out there who disagree with us that is true so let us know get in contact with us there check out some more of our videos and podcasts um in this description and on podbean or wherever you get your podcasts yes and while i'm talking i'm gonna take i'm gonna slow down so that tony has time to figure out normally we like have this huge moment of pausing where we have to like edit out the silence where we have to figure out what we're talking about next but i have talked long enough that tony can now tell us what that's our next right. episode is on that's right it was a seamless transition to tell beautiful. you that we are going to be thinging it up and we're going to be doing our conversation a la our conversation of little shop of horrors in which we look at the original text of the thing back from the I 1950s did, around then and then we're gonna look at the 80s um, yes version of the thing yes so the black and white one from the 50s that that is often called the thing but i think it's called it's got a slightly longer title that i should probably know i'll reference a little bit uh campbell's who goes there which is the original novella mm -hmm. that kind of inspired this all but i think you're you're statement about it being very similar to Little Shop of Horrors, right? This is another opportunity for us to look at two films that you're like, huh, 
I guess, your adaptations of one another. Yeah. And then uh, talk about them. And this will be Tony's first time seeing the 1980s John Carpenter's The it's, Thing. It's my first time seeing any iteration yeah. of The Thing. I, I, I'm excited I'm, for you. I'm well aware of its cultural... Yeah legacy and impact but just have never gotten around to it so i'm excited to check it out i think it's going to be uh your cup of tea so we hope that you will join us for that we encourage you to go back to our backlog thank you as always for listening to our nightmares happy halloween happy halloween and have a spooktacular day